Welcome back to Palmerston, one of the most remote islands in the world, accessible only by boat. There are 35 inhabitants, all descendants of one man and three wives that landed here in 1863. The island was split into three, one section for each wife. The island is still divided between the three families and we've been adopted by one of them. This is Bob, Tupa, Andrew, May, Medina, and Henry. And they're showing us what life is like out here, far, far away from the rest of civilization. solid days of gale force winds. And this is what riding out a blow looks like. We're mostly self-sustainable, practically our own floating tiny island, and we're used to being at sea for days on end. But there's something about being close enough to sea and smell land, but not set foot on it. Staying busy isn't a problem, and there's always that element of anxiety to keep things interesting. Will our mooring line break? Will our neighbors? What if they hail us in the middle of the night? Is the radio loud enough to wake us up? You know, wash, rinse, and repeat. It's all very Groundhog Day. I'm reliving the same day over and over. The winds died down enough to make it to shore, and much like the rest of the world, mom and dad head off to work and the kids go to school. Come on, guys, let's go. Okay. Our first lanes, and they're leaves, but we can eat them. Henry. And what do they taste like? They taste like um, good leaves. Like good leaves? <laughs> Come on, eat to make the cucumbers. What do you What's do? This one? We have to um, uh, put it inside. Hello. Here. You know this one? It's already pollinated. See? That's how do we pollinate. Cool. Wow, that's so cool, Henry. I know. I know. <laughs> this one is so already humble. pollinated. How many little kids do you know that could identify which flower on a plant is male and female? And the only reason they know that is because there's no bees on this island. So they have to pollinate all of their own flowers for anything to grow and to have food. And I think that's incredible. I didn't know that. I learned something new today. It's cool. You can keep it. really neat to see such a small island. I mean, you step into that classroom and you feel like you're going way in the past by, I don't know, just the way that they're being taught, all the kids, different ages. But then you see little hints of the future, talking about the reef and saving the planet, saving water, and then you walk outside and there's this massive solar array. Well, massive for a small island of 30 people. And they're doing rain capture and all this stuff. So it's kind of like the future and the past sort of combined here on this tiny little island. It's, it's, really, it's really neat to see. I got this feeling, love is in season. Let's take a drive down to a place where affection grows. And your heart will know. Let's go down to a place. Where we stand face to face I hear you on this 
sign your name The man shakes your hand and a kiss Ooh, we're the same You ready for this? It's gonna be hard for Ooh, that one squirted out. Best coconuts I've ever had in my life. They're so sweet here. It's, you would swear there's sugar in that. They're so good. Ta-da! I could survive on an island. With a machete. With a machete. Baby chickens are coming for your coconut. I used to do the cement. The cement? You helped build this? Yeah, but I only helped doing the stairs. Only helped doing the stairs? And painting. And stairs. when do you, what's this building for? If I'm, uh, there's, if there's big um, uh, waves coming, we have to come over here and go inside. And go inside. For the waves can't get us. Cyclone. Do you call it a cyclone or do you call it a hurricane, Henry? Hurricane. Call it a hurricane. Mm. Have you experienced a, um, a cyclone? Yes, I've experienced a cyclone. This is Arthur. I really like Arthur. And like everyone on this island, he's a jack of all trades and in particular, administration. He's a philosophical character with one foot rooted in tradition and the other in the future. He shared so many stories about the island, what it was like for his parents and his grandparents, but most passionately, he talked of his concern for the future. And on an incredibly isolated island with a dwindling population, I can't blame him. The internet connection here is surprisingly good, and the supply ships have increased visits. And with those supply ships come increasingly cheap, easy, and convenient mass-made goods. Why tend and harvest when you can simply pop open a bag? So I'll give you this scenario. When I returned back, I saw my older brother and I said, let's get back down to the puraka and let's tend to our puraka and get the puraka going, please. He said, there's no value in it. The kids don't eat it. We don't eat puraka anymore. And I said, all we have to do is maintain it. I said, mum, uncles and grandma, and them, they did all the hard work. All we have to do is for the future. There is no value in the future for puraka. If there was a food crisis in the world today, a food crisis, where there is, say, rice production. It's gone. It's gone, you know? And you're left with local food. What would, what would the people in the Cook Islands, Outer Islands would do? No, they won't. No. No, they won't. What the new generation will do, they will flee. Because they're not accustomed to eating puraka, to eating breadfruit. If you go and see what they're eating today, is chips, mm -hmm. potato chips, it's rice. That's what they're accustomed to. Get them to eat breadfruit. Yeah. So, you know, when you talk about, now we're talking about resilience and building resilience and sustainability, uh, uh, food security. For the next generation. For the, for the next generation, well, the next generation are already accust uh, accustomed to all the imported food stuff. And it's hard so to that, fight that. No, you, you, you can't, you, you know. So, yeah, you're on a losing battle. And let's face it, as dreamy as all of this is, with access to the internet and channels like Pro Home Cooks and French Guy Cooking, the novelty of living off coconuts would eventually wear thin. But one thing the natives nor any YouTuber can balk about is the fresh fish. Look at that! Look at the real barrel, full in the barrel! Ho oh, ho! in the barrel! Beautiful!
Fish has been Palmerston's main export and source of income for a very long time. But warming seas and an insatiable demand make that job harder every year. Supply ship and Santa sleigh evoke a similar feeling around here. Because not only did they take all the fish to the market in Rarotonga, they get a fresh supply of ice cream, chips, flour, rice, fuel, and all sorts of goodies. These ships used to only make it here a couple of times a year, so the more frequent six to eight week deliveries feel like Amazon Prime. And life here, it's just super simple, super sweet, so nice. And this view, this beach, it's just lovely. What a place to grow up, what a place to live, right? <laughs> I know, I know how to climb. Yeah. I grew up in a small town in the middle of West Texas and I thought that I had a lot of freedom and I kind of felt, I don't know, like I could go where I wanted and do what I wanted. But these kids are like next level. I mean, they don't, they don't think they understand the word of like no and not in a bad way, in a good way. Like they aren't told no, don't cross the street and no, don't ride your bike past the, you know, the first three blocks or anything like that. They can just... There's no fear, you know, there's no worry of talking to strangers. They know everybody. The island takes 20 minutes, you know, by foot to circumnavigate. So they go where they want. They do what they want. They get to be kids and climb and bang and not have to think about it. And nobody comes out and tells them no. They just get to be kids. Then run, run, run. Oh God, run. <laughs> 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 the idyllic utopian vibe here is undeniable, but so is the reality of living on a remote and vulnerable island in a warming world. No airport, restaurant, gas station, grocer, or hospital. So whether or not Palmerston sounds like heaven or simply isolation, we have nothing but respect for these families and their ability to thrive on this island for well over 150 years. Ten, yeah, nine. Very cool. Should we do something fun? Nobody's funny. Yeah. 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 Do your hands up here. Yeah. Do your hands up. Five, four, yeah. three. Yeah, put your hands up. Thank you, guys. Yeah, like yeah. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. It's been fun. <laughs> <laughs> so what did our stay cost us? Okay, because we brought the printer, they said, don't worry about paying for the mooring ball. It's supposed to be $10 a day. And then because of the blow, we were here for like seven days. He's like, eh, well, how about you just pay me half? Like, you know, 40 bucks. And then he came on board, he goes, oh, you got vodka? Oh, you got rum? How about a bottle of that? <laughs> so our stay cost us a small bottle of rum and a small bottle of vodka. Not bad. Not bad. <laughs> 
or gasoline, right? Oh yeah, or uh, five gallons of gasoline because it's hard for them to get this stuff out here. Yep. I don't know. He goes, money doesn't do us any good here in Palmerston. We need other things. When the sun rises again, we'll raise our sails and set course for Niue, the world's smallest independent nation some 400 nautical miles away. Thank you for sharing your world with us, Palmerston. We won't soon forget you.